joined now here in studio by Fianna Fáil TD Jim O'Callaghan and travel journalist Owen Corey. Um, good evening to you both. Mm -hmm. um, we heard uh, Owen Corey, uh, and I mentioned it there a little earlier, uh, a dramatic recovery. My Michael O'Leary was predicting we'd all be hitting the beaches of Europe in July, August and September. But I think um, Tony Holland has come out this evening at that NAFED briefing and said, don't be packing your bags, folks. We're not going anywhere. The suntan lotion might need to be, you know, warmed up first. I think what's really interesting with Michael O'Leary, uh, the message that he sent is he's not phased by this. He said uh, a lot of things ablaze this morning. He talked about the vaccination program being slow, uh, refunds, travel agents. There are fires all day long on different media, people getting out. But the real message is that he's ready to return. Ryanair have been doing something really interesting. They've been keeping their aircraft certified and they've been keeping their pilot certified. That means they don't have to go back into a simulator and the aircraft won't run into what will be a traffic jam of trying to recertify when things get going. They didn't ground their planes and all of the routes like other airlines did. They're flying empty planes because they're not going to run into that certification where they all have to go back in and get their safety certs. What will happen is once the green light is there, it mightn't happen in July, as he says, it might happen a little later, but they will be ready to return to the sky. That's really good for Ireland because they're an Irish airline and very loyal to Ireland, despite all the noise he makes about the Irish government. That means it'll be very good for travel outbound and for tourism inbound. We don't know what's going to happen with vaccinations. We probably need a run of luck to get Europe travelling again as early as July. But the real message from Michael O'Leary today, and it's a positive one, it's important one, it might have been missed because he caused so many rows, is that he's ready to return to the sky and get Ireland connected again. What I suspect will happen, and there's a sort of a resistance to connectivity, and we've, you know, the uh, con figures will show from Eurocontrol that the old, the, we, are the, we are the country that has removed the most of our connectivity since 2019 of the 40. We're bottom of that chart. But the rest of Europe starts moving, Ireland will start getting those air routes wound up again, and we could see a recovery. We need a bit of luck for it, but the great news today is that Ryanair are going to lead the rush back into Europe. When will when will that be allowed, I suppose, Jim O'Callaghan? I mean, do you see any possibility for non-essential international travel this summer for people? Well, I don't know is the answer to that, Gary, to be honest with you. But I think and what we, is it dependent on? Well, we have a strategy, OK? The strategy is because we have high levels of people in hospital, we need to get the numbers down to get hospitals' numbers down lower. At the same time, we're vaccinating significant numbers of people. And once the hospitalizations go down and the va vaccinations go up, I think we will see a lift of restrictions. I also think, and it's good to see what's going to happen in the UK beside us, because they're a couple of weeks ahead of us, as you say, so we'll get a good indication from the UK how effective the vaccine is in, in terms of returning life to normal. I think that'll be a very good guide for us. So it's, I don't would know... Would you agree what... with Tony Hulahan, uh, who said this evening, don't pack your bags, folks, we're not going anywhere this summer. It will be the summer of staycation. Yeah, let, let's wait to see. It's too early to say that. Obviously, Tony Hulahan was asked a question this evening. He answered the question the way he's entitled to, whatever whatever he thinks. I don't know. It's too early. You know, I think we just need to see how we, fa how we get on with this in terms of where we are in June, July. But I'm hopeful that we're going to be in a much different position in June and July. Like this vaccination, if it displays the efficacy, it displays in tests, it's going to transform this issue. And we're going to get out of this misery. Where exactly are we at now, Owen Corey, when it comes to quarantining and uh, mandatory isolation for international travellers and those arriving into the country? It's quite simple. It's, there's a lot of confusion out there. If you're coming to Ireland, you will need a test and you will need it 72 hours in the 72 hours before you travel. And the really important thing is you're not getting on an aircraft without it. And you won't be allowed on the aircraft. So all of that question about arriving without a test at are you at immigration in Dublin airport, it's not going to arise. We've seen it's going to be the airline handlers. The check-in desk is where the action is going to be. Now, we've seen uh, something that confused the airlines, the airports, myself, everybody. People arriving in Dublin without it done, which means that perhaps in the first week of it or two, check-in people were letting people on board aircraft. I would expect that to change. And when the mandatory quarantine is legislated for, it'll apply to the two countries, Brazil, South Africa, and people arriving with having, without having done the test and having got through the check-in, I don't expect the numbers to be large.
When do you think that's going to happen? Uh, when will we be in a position that if people are coming in from those countries, as Owen mentioned, that they will be put into mandatory Well, quarantine? we need to introduce legislation to give effect to that, and that should be emergency legislation, so I would hope that would be done this month. But it is important that it is done. The month of February, by the yeah, end of February. Yeah. Like, I can't give you a date as to when it will be enacted, but when you think of the draconian restrictions we are all living under, I don't think it is too much to impose that type of mandatory quarantining on certain people coming in. And the concern here... Do you think that mandatory quarantining should have been extended beyond uh, those countries that are... Well, there's a, there, I think we have to understand what's the purpose of the quarantining. The purpose is to try to ensure that we don't get those variants in which can transmit very quickly. That's the objective. It's not just to stop any type of COVID coming into the country because we have it here. So I think that's the primary purpose of it. I think it will be effective. Listen, if we were if we were in a, a different position, if we had much lower rates and if we didn't have a vaccine, I think probably, yeah, we would go down the route of Australia and New Zealand. But listen, we have the vaccine uh, with us now and we have an avenue out of this and we have relatively high rates still in the country. So I just think we need to be realistic in what we seek to achieve with quarantine. The focus, it seems, this year, though, is going to be on this staycation, isn't it, On at the moment, very briefly? Without everything, without the air opening up, that's where the action is going to be. And remember, we have problems there as well, because for staycations to work, we want the lockdown, you know, the whack-a-mole approach to the virus and bouncing in and out of lockdown, that has to come to a halt. And also, we need to be certain that it won't happen in peak season. That could cause havoc for a staycation.